So in the last video, Xiao Qin is going to leave Chen Yu for good, at least it seems like that for now. This is part 3 of the recap of the Chinese drama Nothing But 30, finally. Okay, so Xiao Xin's parents finally find out that they had a divorce, which is a shame to a Chinese family. Basically, unemployment, divorce, childless, these are disgraceful to Chinese parents. But Xiao Qin this time is not going to change her mind. Her parents are pretty upset. So she packs up the last bit of her stuff and leaves him for good. Xiao Qin has moved out to a one bedroom apartment and her younger boyfriend comes to visit all the time. Xiao Qin's parents pay her a surprise visit. It happens that the young boyfriend is here playing video games. So the first impression of this young boyfriend is pretty bad to the parents. That is just the first hurdle. As time goes by, more problems of their relationship starts to emerge. The young man is a Kabardim type of guy, seize the moment, leave for the moment. Yet it doesn't resonate with Xiao Qin because what she wants is a future, a stable future with the man. Xiao Qin finds her again having a lot of differences between herself and, and this boyfriend. On the other side, being unemployed and divorced, Chen Yu has given up on himself. Chen Yu's brother pays Xiao Qin a visit, asking Xiao Qin to give Chen Yu help. Through Chen Yu's brother, Xiao Qin comes to know that all the little things Chen Yu always did to make their life easier. When thinking about that, she's deeply touched. On the weekend, when the young boyfriend takes her away for a trip, she becomes aware that Chen Yu is leaving on the next day. So she decides to go back to the city to see Chen Yu for the last time. On the way back, she suspected the taxi driver was going to do something terrible to her. She escaped, but is lost in the woods. She called Chen Yu, who comes to her rescue finally. They didn't get back together. Chen Yu still leaves the city, but Xiao Qin also breaks up with her young boyfriend. She then goes on to a vacation with Gu Jia and Mani, and Chen Yu happens to be in the area. So the two of them go on a road trip in Chen Yu's new mobile home. As things get better, Chen Yu proposes again, and they get back together. Then Xiao Qin catches Gu Jia's husband cheating. When Gu Jia is sorting out her family issues, Xiao Qin keeps her son in their home for a few days. After spending some meaningful time with his boy, Chen Yu decides that it's time to start their own family. And there are more good news. Remember Xiao Qin started writing when her life was in pieces? She finished her novel and it's been well received. A publisher contacted Xiao Qin and gave her an irresistible offer. From here on, she had a drastic career change and becomes a full-time writer. For money, as she has promised to her parents, she finally leaves Shanghai and gets back to her small town. The small town life is slow. She kind of enjoyed it in the beginning. But then she gets bored really quickly because there isn't much to do. Everyone knows each other and people tend to gossip a lot. It becomes very annoying. The parents of money are desperate for her to find a husband. That again is what Chinese parents usually do when you hit certain age, like 30. So they set her up with a blind date with the most perfect man in town, Zhang. Zhang works, let's say he works as a chief official in a local government office. So a big fish in a small pond, so to speak. Everyone in town knows Zhang and everyone pays him respect. If money wants anything, Zhang could just snap his finger and make it happen, like giving her a job. But this is not what Mani wants. She is too young to be settled in a small town like this. Mani misses her old life, the challenges and the accomplishments that come after. So again she decides to head back to Shanghai. While she was in town, she met this man that her ex-boyfriend introduced her to. This guy is a multimillionaire who could get Mani a new job. He makes her an offer, three months of her time if she can complete the tasks then she'll get a job better than she asks for. Or she'll be his personal assistant. Actually, a subtle way to say mysteries. He was saying it to deter money, but money takes up the challenge anyway, and she's assigned to the company's debt collection department. In the new job, she has to deal with people from all walks of life. Many of these people she collects money from are serial con men. They disavow their debts and even play victims. Money unfortunately falls for one of their scams. Not only that she didn't collect any money, she's lost her saving by lending some money to one of the scammers. 
Again, money is beaten up. But she still has the contract with the boss man, so she can't give up. She has to keep going. This time, she's dealing with a rich kid. The rich kid doesn't like the last debt collector, so she's intentionally not paying back the debt even if she can. So Mani has to do whatever she can to appease this rich kid, like giving her roadside assistance or even taking this rich kid to hospital. In the meantime, Mani is being singled out at work. Her boss has some seedy business deals behind everyone's back. He was secretly taking in commissions and Mani has gathered the evidence to go against him. Mani was banned from entering her workplace because her superior wants to get rid of her. Finally, Mani blows the whistle, her superior gets caught and she gets her old job back. Three months fly by quickly. Mani successfully achieved the target set by the multimillionaire. She's now passed the test. As the agreement per stipulated, she's entitled to her dream job the store manager, but she declines the offer instead. Mani tells the boss that she would like to pursue further studies in another country. She and the boss part on good terms. Now onto the story of Gu Jia. Remember Xu Huanshan and his mistress are in the same hotel as Gu Jia, and he almost gets caught by Gu Jia. Gu Jia is still struggling with the tea farm and she spends much time to promote her products. This provides the time for Xu Huanshan to be with the Niu Yu. So on a trip to the firework factory, she comes along with Xi Huanshan when Gu Jia has to go to a separate trip. They tell the factory manager that she's Xi Huanshan's secretary, and he believes them. Gu Jia is ferociously against producing blue fireworks because it poses a great danger to their factory. But because Lin Yu likes the blue fireworks, Xi Huanshan decides to keep producing them. He even tells the factory manager to lie to Gu Jia. Back in the city, Xu Huanshan splits his time between the family and his mistress. Lin, however, wants more and more from him, and she finally gets a job as a receptionist at Gu Jia's apartment building. This is alarming to Xu Huanshan because he knows that Lin is threatening the stability of his family. He indeed had an infatuation with Lin, but never had he thought about leaving Gu Jia and their son. So Xu Huanshan packs Lin's bag and sends her away in the airport, thinking that there'll be the end of it. But Lin is not backing down easily. She is getting even closer to Gu Jia, even their son. Gu Jia is unsuspecting. But one day the factory manager pays a visit, then Gu Jia knows someone went to the firework factory with Xu Huanshan, a mistress. But she is not sure who that was until Lin Yu Yu sees Gu Jia again. Gu Jia notices the band-aid on her finger, the same band-aid that her family uses. Now she knows, she knows everything. Xu Huanshan tells Gu Jia that he cheated in the heat of the moment and he would never leave her and their son, but Gu Jia wants a divorce. Gu Jia goes to see Lin and the three of them sit down and talk it over. Xu Huanshan confesses that he cheated in the heat of the moment to both women. Just when they're signing the divorce paper, Xu Huanshan receives a phone call. It's the blue fireworks. The factory had an accident. Xu Huanshan is responsible for the accident, hence the prison. For Gu Jia, it's the start of her new life. She has her business, the tea farm, her son to look after, and her father by her side. So, this story of these three women will end on a positive note. Xiao Qin has become a professional author. Mani goes abroad for further studies, and Gu Jia appears at events where women entrepreneurs are highly celebrated. This popular C drama defies the traditional view of women in their 30s. It tells people that life doesn't stop at a certain age, instead there are endless possibilities. With that, I conclude this last video of the recap of the C drama, Nothing But 30. I would appreciate it if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you again for tuning in and please do come back for future videos.